Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. <sighs> another year, another NaNoWriMo. <laughs> I'm so excited to do NaNoWriMo this year. I feel like this year, I don't know, this year, something about this year's NaNoWriMo feels really special. I'm not really sure why or what it is, especially because I'm not really very prepared this year. And I think what it is, is it makes me really nostalgic and really just connect to the very first time I did NaNoWriMo back in 2014 and I was extremely unprepared. It was something I kind of learned about a couple days before and I and I really wanted to do it so badly and I just decided to take the plunge. It had been years since I had really written anything or dedicated myself to my writing and it was my first endeavor and the novel that came out of that experience was so beautiful and even more than anything, this channel was birthed out of that experience. I met so many amazing people and connected with so many great writers. And it was just a once in a lifetime experience that I have never really been able to have again. Even though I have participated in several other NaNoWriMo's and kept NaNoWriMo since then. And so this year feels very reminiscent to that very first time because once again, I'm very unprepared. <laughs> the clips that you will watch shortly you will see my failed Preptober slash Vlogtober attempts. Um, I had this plan to kind of prep throughout October and just come out with a really great outline and vlog every day and do Vlogtober and do Preptober in conjunction. And it just, it just never happened. Things really fell through for me and somewhere along the way, I completely lost sight of my story and I started to second guess my story and now I'm not really sure what I am going to be doing. And that's exactly how I felt the very first NaNoWriMo. So I am very excited because what came out of that fear, anxiety, and uncertainty was such a beautiful story and such a beautiful experience. And so I'm hoping that that will be replicated this year. <sighs> so enjoy the clips that you're about to see. But before I go, I just want to let you all know that I will be vlogging this NaNoWriMo experience. I'm not sure I'll be able to do daily vlogs, but I will capture a little bit of each day's writing journey and I will try to come up with weekly vlogs or bi-weekly vlogs or maybe I will just post one big ta-da at the end. Probably not. It's going to be way too long. But I will capture each moment and um, each important moment, whatever doesn't end up on the editing floor, for you all to see so that you can follow along on my journey. Please let me know if you will be doing NaNoWriMo this year. Definitely write down in the comments, um, fellow writers, you know, if you've never written a novel before, let this be your call to action and your motivation. If it's something that you've secretly always wanted to do or not so secretly, then this is your sign right here that this is your year and you should definitely attempt it. It is a great, great learning experience and nothing but greatness can come out of it. Whether you reach the 50,000 words or not, I highly recommend NaNoWriMo. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Definitely join me on the NaNoWriMo site and join up. I will leave my links down below in the description box. Enjoy the few clips that <laughs> show my failure for Preptober slash Vlogtober. And I will catch you guys later this month. Bye. Happy writing. Happy October 3rd, it's Mean Girls Day. And I'm trying to figure out how to start this writing vlog. It is Wednesday, October 3rd, around 6.35. And I'm gonna start my writing vlog because I'm gonna do Vlogtober, which is I'm gonna try to vlog every day in October. And I am doing a camp, camp? No, just plain NaNoWriMo prep. So NaNoWriMo prep, or preparation which means I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my story now I want to take you guys along on this journey and have proper writing videos for this process and just kind of take you along I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet project 
something or other. We'll see. I'll update you guys in the next clip. It's blocked a vlog. <laughs> Can't talk. Already, this video is off to a great start. It's Vlogtober day five, and I just wanted to come on here and say hello and show my face. I know in that first clip, things were a little rushed, and I was kind of trying to acclimate myself mentally to the fact that I'm going to try to do Vlogtober this month. I'm probably not going to be able to vlog every single day. I did not vlog yesterday. As you can see, we have jumped from day three to day five, and that's probably how it's going to be for the remainder of this Vlogtober. I'm going to try to film, if not every day, then at least every other day, and just update you guys on where I am with my Nana Rimo preparation and the story that I'm working on, working on, and all that jazz. I just want to say that this will be um, Project Talk. So I've come up with a name for my project. It's Project Talk. And I just want to talk a little bit about the themes and the ideas behind the story. Stay tuned. All right. So first, I want to talk about the idea behind Project Talk or how I got up the got the idea for the story. So are you ever reading a book and the character maybe the main character or one of the side characters gets into a jam, right? Gets into a situation, more likely like an argument with another character. Let's say they're in an argument with a character that you do not like. So a character that you do like is in some type of argument or situation with another character that you do not like. And unfortunately, unfortunately the character that you do not like gets one over on the character that you do like and they win the argument or they win the situation they come out on top and you're just cringing while you're reading these scenes or or this particular scene and you're just thinking in my head oh no and you're just thinking in my if only so and so had said this or done this oh if only you know you know those if only moments and they happen in real life too you know when you get into an argument with someone whoever it is friend family coworker enemy whoever or you get into some type of situation or altercation with another person and let's say it's you know after the fact and you're just laying there in bed at night or you're just sitting in your house and you're like, oh, I wish I had said this. And, and all the great, the greatest comebacks start coming to you after the fact and what you should have done or should have said in that moment starts coming to you after the fact, like hours or moments after it's already passed. So it's too late. I think about that all the time. And I always think about what if we had characters or a character that did have the perfect comeback and always said exactly the right thing and always did exactly the right thing in that moment and you know what a feeling of satisfaction that would give me because when I'm reading a novel and I get into to those cringeworthy moments or they even happen in real life it just irks my soul and there's just a feeling of frustration that's left behind now of course that can be used as you know a way to advance the story a way to really showcase you know how a character is whether it's a weak character or a timid character or just a character that's trying to overcome something so this can definitely be used as a plot device but i just think it would be so fascinating if you had a whole story made up of characters who just are right on the money and in that situation they say exactly what needs to be said the cutting word the, the perfect comeback or or do exactly what needs to be done in that moment and the overwhelming satisfaction that it would bring to readers I think is where the idea for my story came from I hope that was understandable and not a lot of mumbo-jumbo but that's where the initial seed was planted and I've always wondered that for years every time I read a book and I come across scenes like that situations I always think to myself what would it be like to read a book where you're actually like yes you know when the character says exactly what needs to be said and does exactly what needs to be done you're reading you're like hell yes and you're so satisfied and you're just so happy so that's where the seed was planted so I came up with a storyline that's kind of that's the foundation you have these two twin sisters and one twin is known for always saying the right thing she's the mouthpiece right she's always saying the right thing she has the perfect comebacks she's witty the perfect cutting remark like no one messes with her because her mouth is just like 
Her mouth is like a gun, like just shooting out bullets and taking people out. But she's not so much an action girl. She's, she's not really a fighter. She's not really one to do. She fights with her words. Then you have the other twin that doesn't really speak much, doesn't really argue, doesn't use her words, is more of an act, active, an action girl. Like she will put up her fists in a second, but not necessarily just fighting or physical altercations. She's more, she just takes action. She knows exactly what to do in each situation. She's that person that if there was a speeding car coming towards a small child, she would like, in a split second, just run to the street, grab the kid, and roll over and save the kid. Like she wouldn't, she doesn't hesitate. She she moves and she takes perfect action at the perfect time, doing the perfect thing. So what would happen if you had these two characters, these twin girls, they're sisters, and they're in their last year in high school, and they've always been together, right? And they're the perfect yin and yang. Together they are amazing, and no one can really overcome them or. Or get the best of them because you've got one that has the mouth and the words and then you got the other that's got the actions what if for their senior year they're separated because the twin who's always acting you know moving and doing she gets into an art school that she's always wanted to go to and it's all the way in London and these twins are separated for the first time in their lives and they're put into situations where their weaknesses are highlighted. So the twin who's always saying the right thing and has the words is put into situations where words don't matter and she has to act and she's never done that. That's what her twin did. And so she's weak in that area. And she, that's how she has to survive now in this environment. And then you have the other twin who's always acted and, and, and done the right thing is now put in a situation where she has to use her words. And once again, that's her weakness, but that's how she has to survive in this new setting is with words. So I just wanted to play on that and put these characters in different scenarios. That's not the bulk of the storyline, but that's like the foundation. And then of course, um, there's gonna be a romance because that's my thing. I write teen, new adult, young adult romance. I love it. I always have to have a romance line, storyline in my stories because I'm a sucker for love and I wanted to be like a romance novelist since I was like 11. So what are you going to do? So that there's a romance in the story. I'm not going to go too deeply into that in, that in this video. I just wanted to talk about the initial idea behind the story and how I came up with it. And I love the idea of twins. And I don't know why. I just love the idea of twins and twin girls, especially. I think it's because I grew up watching the Olsen twins and... Um, Tia and Tamara, the Maori twins, just twins were very popular in my generation growing up in the 90s. So I think I've always had a love for girl twins because of my childhood. Um, yeah, so what else can I tell you guys? Oh, I'm doing a three act story structure. So we have the first act, which is the beginning of the story, which sets up everything. Then we have the middle act, which is where a lot of the action and the tension takes place. And the story kind of builds and builds and builds and builds. The plot kind of crescendos. And then we have the third act where things are kind of starting to come down a little bit. There might be some small minor peaks in there. Um, but the third act is gonna sort of finish out the novel, wrap everything up. And as always in most of my novels, I always employ certain story literary techniques. I can't think of the formal word for it right now, but I always use flashbacks. I don't know why, but I'm obsessed with flashbacks. I don't know what it is. And the funny thing is, I don't really like reading flashbacks in books. You know, a lot of my favorite novels don't have flashbacks and that's for a reason. I hate reading about the past when I read books for myself. I just want to kind of get into the story and move forward. But when there are all these flashbacks going back to the past, it frustrates me. There are a handful of books that I love that have done it really well. And I don't know why, but as a writer, I love flashbacks. It's the craziest thing. It's like as a reader, I hate them. As a writer, I love them. I don't know. So I'm employing flashbacks in the story. And for the first time, I also am using different narrative voices. Usually when I write a story... I write from one perspective and one point of view. And in this particular novel, I have dual point of view, which is so crazy because I didn't realize how entertaining and how fun it is to write from more than one character's point of view. It is so fun. It just opens up a whole new world and a whole new just like realm of possibilities for my writing and just 
I don't know. It's just exciting. It's fun. It's it's so fun to be in another character's head and that's not your main or, you know, to have more than one main character that you're writing from their point of view. I don't know. I've never done it before. So this is a lot of fun. I mean, I'm having fun with that. So, yep, I've got a three act story structure and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the conflicts are in the novel. Um, what will take place, place in each scene. I still don't know how the novel will end. There are so many loose, loose ends still that I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. So yes, as this month goes on, hopefully things become more clear and concrete, but right now it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of balls in the air right now. But yeah, that's it for Vlogtober day five. I just wanted to come on, you know, speak a little bit about my novel. I think I'm going to go into more character development in my next video, so, or in my next clip. This was a rather lengthy discussion, but I'm going to try to film tomorrow. Tomorrow will be day six, and I'll try to go into a little bit more of my characters tomorrow, and then I will put this week up, and I think I will do these vlogs in weeks. So this will be the week one vlog, and then week two's vlog will start on Sunday and run through Saturday. I think I'll do it that way. All right. I will catch you guys in my next video. Stay tuned for my next, not my next video, in the next clip. You guys, I can't film after work. It does not work out for my brain. Okay, I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye. And detailed it is. I know that the adaptation did a really great job. So I just have been really scared to tap into those emotions, but I cannot wait.